Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Samantha Harold. I'm a senior manager of clinical engineering for the Yale New Haven Health System, which is based out of New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, Tim and I have very similar presentations. I'll be building off of some of what he said, uh, specifically trying to focus a little bit on the support side, what our differences are, but really stressing that IT does some things well um, that we should in CE try to emulate. Um, so just a little bit further about my background, I did have my career start uh, working in clinical engineering as a typical clinical engineer for ABM Healthcare Support Services, which is a third-party biomed company. I was based out of Providence, Rhode Island, uh, and then took uh, a five-year-ish detour into the world of IT, um, where I worked on Yale's clinical engineering integrations team, specifically integrating biomedical equipment to the electronic medical record, as well as sending you know, alarms and alerts to phones and other places, um, and then came back to clinical engineering, quote unquote, proper, um, now managing the, a large team uh, focusing on operations, capital planning, uh, personnel development, et cetera. So I have worn both hats of CE and IT, um, and you know, really think that my experience uh, you know, lends to some of the information in this presentation and echoes what Timothy had said before. So we all know uh, in a healthcare system, IT and clinical engineering departments are typically two very separate teams with their own uh, you know, strategies, goals, and daily tasks. Uh, while clinical engineering is focused on the application of medical technology um, in the patient care delivery process, IT teams are very much focusing on managing you know, the entire IT infrastructure. And formerly, IT used to be the core of you know, business, financial systems at all foundations you know, in the healthcare sector. Um, they were responsible for logistics, human resources, uh, payroll, billing, typically. Uh, but nowadays, when medical equipment and systems are merging with those information systems, um, they're, they're generating a flow of information and data that extends outward from the patient generating from the patient's bedside and even beyond, right? Now we have RPM and, and telehealth. Um, so clinical engineering and IT are collaborating more and more to provide the patient data through that hospital network to the physician um, so they can you know, diagnose and treat the patient. But as Timothy had mentioned, you know, this collaboration is not without its challenges. Uh, so just wanna share a, a few personal experience stories where I've heard or experienced myself, you know, clinical engineers complaining about IT service representatives that they're not like us. There's often that image of a lack of urgency. Uh, so at Yale New Haven Health, our anesthesia machines, the ventilators, and the patient monitors are integrated into the electronic medical record. So the anesthesiologists and CRNAs can validate data in near real time um, as it comes in from those medical devices. So there is a touchscreen PC or like a touchscreen monitor with a PC mounted on the anesthesia machine with all of you know, CE's medical equipment and our integration equipment as well. Um, so IT is responsible for the monitor and the PC and clinical engineering and the, the CE integrations team is responsible for the other half. Um, so you know, I had a, a technician working in the OR that data wasn't flowing to Epic, which is the EMR that we use. And they had called the um, IT support hotline, which is supposed to be a quick way for other IT professionals to get help from another IT team. Um, and the, the desktop person on the other end of the line had asked the CE technician to submit a work order uh, in the work order system. So just a lack of general understanding that there was a patient on the table um, and that we needed to get the you know, integration back up and running soon uh, so that the anesthesiologist could continue to monitor the patient and document effectively. Um, but this kind of lends into you know, the second uh, iteration of what folks typically think IT um, personnel have issues with, you know, they're uncomfortable in patient rooms. Uh, you know, they don't like going into the ORs. You know, when COVID first you know, kind of rolled out, 
we had a lot of IT personnel that refused to go into COVID, COVID rooms. Um, so, you know, that was, you know, very challenging and difficult for us when we are a much smaller team than the IT group trying to manage a lot of different integrations um, and, you know, networked medical equipment, uh, relying on their support when we had it in the past to troubleshoot certain things. And now they're, you know, coming back and saying they're not going to go into that patient room. Um, and then the last kind of IT uh, stereotype is that they have very arduous processes. Um, and my colleague, Joe Willette, I, uh, you know, kind of give him a little bit of pushback all the time because I too, having worked in IT, am very frustrated with some of the processes um, around change management and notifying different IT teams when vendors are accessing our network. Um, you know, it does lend to increased visibility and safety of our network, of course, and I completely understand those cybersecurity concerns, um, but it does become cumbersome when you have to send an email with all this information out that the vendor is accessing your server to troubleshoot an issue, uh, especially when time is of the essence and you have a telemetry monitoring system that is down. Um, you know, there's not really necessarily all that time up front. Definitely, we can circle back. Um, but those are just some of the, the things that, you know, IT doesn't make easier for us uh, as clinical engineering to do our job. So now that I've given you some very bad examples of interactions with our IT personnel, um, I do want to caution everyone to, in fact, look for the good. Um, there is, you know, the cybersecurity concerns that Timothy and I had both mentioned and Joe will expand upon. Um, but those are things that we do need to take seriously and, uh, you know, kind of modify our workflows to meet that need. So in preparation for this talk, I came across an article from TechNation uh, written by Frank Magnarelli, and it posed the question to clinical engineering, what does your IT department do well? Um, he had previously, you know, was like, how does everyone feel about their IT? And as I mentioned, clinical engineering has a lot of opinions about IT, uh, but most of them are very negative. But I would question each of you on this webinar as well to think, what does your IT department do well? Um, and the author of this article, Frank, had come about this question after reading Sam Walton's autobiography book called Made in America. Uh, Sam Walton, for those who don't know, is the founder of Walmart and Sam's Club. Um, and in the early days when he had just kind of a few stores set up, he would send his service managers to competitive stores um, you know, just to kind of observe and, and bring back their findings. And what he found was that the service managers would come back and say all the things that the other stores were doing wrong and why Sam Walton's Walmart stores uh, were far superior. But, you know, that wasn't really the goal of this experiment. He wanted everyone to see kind of what they were doing well, because he was not afraid to do things in a different way and do what others are doing if it was indeed better. Um, so although, you know, our IT department is not our competitor, um, they have very, been very successful in growing um, their responsibilities and footprint within the healthcare system. Um, you know, in the early days of IT management, they weren't very different than clinical engineering. Um, as Timothy had mentioned, they were characterized by a focus on the management of technologies themselves, taking more of a break fix kind of approach and ad hoc operations. Um, but as IT kind of grew, you know, IT organizations began to focus on the management of services and the delivery of those services to the business. Um, so they really positioned themselves to be indispensable by bringing new technology into the hospital and making operations more efficient. You know, there are chief information officers, there are chief technology officers, there are no chief clinical engineering officers. Um, so, you know, how do we position ourselves to be in that spot that IT kind of had made themselves? And just echoing kind of what Timothy had said, we want to be open-minded and collaborate with IT as, again, the devices continue to converge with network systems. It's critical that, you know, clinical engineering, information technology, and clinical informatics, we all kind of like stay in sync, um, especially when decision-making comes about for selection of new clinical devices. Um, we need to make our CE projects visible to IT leadership. Uh, they need to be apprised of what the device's uses and what our long-term strategic plan is for it, um, especially because 
Microsoft is updating their OS, you know, every few years and patient monitoring, you know, becomes outdated just as quickly as the OSs get updated. Um, so it's very important for IT to kind of be partners in that battle with us against the vendors, essentially. Um, you know, and also looking at critical initiatives like alarm fatigue uh, is another great opportunity for clinical engineering and IT to kind of bridge some of these gaps um, related to patient care. So with that, I will conclude uh, my presentation as well.